This is Ferris from Wood Library with my friend Bernard, and guess what? It's time for some bedtime stories, so get cozy, settle on down, and let's get started. Bernard's going to sit right over here so he can watch. Well, with all this warm weather, in between all of the raindrops, have you all had a chance to go down to the beach? That's what our first story is about. It's called To the Beach. It's by Linda Ashman with illustrations by Nadine Bernard Westcott. And it's published by Harcourt Incorporated. There they are, all loaded up in the car, ready to go. The car is packed. We're on our way. We're going to the beach today. A block away, Katie starts to moan. We can't leave Fido home alone. Do you know who Fido is? their dog. So turn around, find Fido fast. He's curled up sleeping in the grass. The sun is bright. We squid our eyes. The beach umbrella, Mama cries. It's with the tote bag in the den. Grab them both and start again. So there they are with the beach bag and the umbrella on top of the car. Down the street, a sudden wail. Baby's yelling, ducky pail. Hit the brakes, reverse the car, retrieve the pail. But don't get far. Benny shouts, I need a drink. Whoops, the cooler's by the sink. Weave through cars, avoid the crash. Whoop. To the kitchen in a flash. Make it through the traffic light. Papa says, who packed the kite? Quick U-turn, oh, what a ride. There it is, beside the slide. Cross the bridge, now Anne's upset. Where's the beach ball? Where's the net? Mother swerves, tires screech. <coughs> Home again and then to the beach. I wish you'd learn to pack, I gloat. But wait a minute, where's my boat? Drive back home, oh, it takes a year. Fetch the boat and the fishing gear. We're looking from the top down on their car. A lot of stuff up there. That was it. We're packed at last. We're on the highway moving fast. Now we're really on our way. We're going to the beach today. Oh no, a flash, a thunder crack, a sudden storm. We're turning back. Take the exit, traffic slow. Cross the bridge, mm, it's stop and go. Back through town, we're near the end. Just one more street and then home again. And now it's pouring, dark as night. Hop out fast, unload the kite, the beach umbrella, the cooler, tote, the ducky pail, the dog, the boat, the fishing gear, the ball and net. Quick, before we're soaking wet. The car's unpacked. We're finally done. Just in time to see the sun. So do you see what they've done? Instead of going to the beach, they're doing all the things that they would do at the beach at home. Swimming, fishing, playing with the mud instead of the sand, getting a suntan, eating sandwiches, and snoozing, all fun things to do if you go to the beach. Well, let's do a finger play together about, hmm, should we have our monkeys jump on the bed? Or should we, oh, let's do the monkeys. I've got five little monkeys who were jumping on the bed. 
one fell off and he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So fold one down. Four little monkeys are jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Well, daddy called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So three little monkeys were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So now two little monkeys were jumping on the bed. When one fell off, oh, he bumped his head. So daddy called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So that leaves one little monkey who was jumping on the bed. When she fell off, oh, she bumped her head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, say it with me, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So there are no more monkeys. But well, let's see. We had them going to the beach. And sometimes when you go to the beach, you might take your boat. And this is a boat version of Old MacDonald. It's Old MacDonald Had a Boat by Steve Goetz with pictures by Ida Cabin. Hope I'm saying that right. And published by Chronicle Books. So I guess we're gonna to have to sing a song. And I wonder how it would be different from the regular Old MacDonald. I guess that's Old MacDonald. And that must be Old Mrs. MacDonald. They're sitting on their porch and looks like they're enjoying a cup of coffee. Sun's probably just coming up over here. Well, old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a truck, E-I-E-I-O, with a slow, slow here and a slow, slow there. Here a slow, there a slow, Everywhere a slow, slow. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a saw. E-I-E-I, whoa! With a buzz, buzz here and a buzz, buzz there. Here a buzz, there a buzz, everywhere buzz, buzz. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a hammer. E-I-E-I, toe. With a bang, bang here and a bang, bang there. Here a bang, there a bang, everywhere a bang, bang. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Can you see what they're building? What does it look like to you? Guess we better keep reading and singing. And on that farm he had a torch. E-I-E-I, blow with a blow blow here and a blow blow there here a blow there a blow everywhere a blow blow old macdonald had a farm e-i-e-i-o and on that farm he had a sander do you recognize these are all tools they're building something aren't they e-i-e-i Oh, with a shh, shh here and a shh, shh there. Here, shh, there, shh, everywhere. Shh, shh. See if I'm getting it all smooth. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. 
And on that farm, he had a bucket. What was the bucket? It was white paint. E I E I glow with a roll roll here and a roll roll there. Here a roll, there a roll, everywhere a roll roll. Old MacDonald had a farm. E I E I O. And on that farm he had a trailer. E I E I heave ho. It in the water, and I don't think it's gonna sink. With a splash splash here and a splash splash there. Here a splash, there a splash, everywhere a splash splash. Old MacDonald had a farm, E I E I O. And on that farm, he had a boat. Looks mighty fine, doesn't it? It's called the Fantastic. E I E I tow. He's towing a goat and a cow and a whole bunch of chickens and a duck and a sheep and a cat and some pigs. They're all water skiing. And they had a wonderful day. I think they live on a lake like we do. And there they are having a little lemonade before they turn in for the night. So that was fun. He built a new boat, didn't he? Very good. Well, I know a song about a boat. Can you grab a hold of your oars? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Shall we row faster? Let's give it a try. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. You think we could go even faster? Let's give it a try. Ready? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Well, that was getting a little out of control there. I don't know if I can row that fast for that long. And we're going to have a book that is out of control. This is another book by Richard Byrne called This Book is Out of Control. He did the pictures as well as writing the story. And this is published by Henry Holt and Company. And you can see the boys coming down the street and he's got a box in his hand. I can't wait to see what's inside. Bella was at home when someone on the other page knocked at the door. It was Ben and he had a new toy to show Bella. Slam went the door. It's remote controlled, said Ben. Watch what the ladder does when I press the up button. Did the ladder go up? Hmm. Nothing seemed to happen. Or did it? Did you see what happened to the dog? He went up. So Ben pressed the spin button. Do you know what it means to spin? Go around and around. I don't know if that would be the light or the truck itself, but did the truck spin? No, it's just not moving, said Bella. But something was moving. See if it will make a noise instead. So Ben pressed the siren button. Hmm, it's a bit quiet, said Bella. Although next door, there was a sound. Try a 
different noise. How about the voice button? Help! This book is out of control! Who said that? asked Bella. It's your dog. He's talking, said Ben. And I'm stuck, said the dog. Can one of your buttons get me down from here? Oh, I think turn might work, replied Ben. So he pressed the turn button. But it didn't. All of a sudden, Bella was up there too. And so was Ben. Oops. Bella thought for a moment, and then she began, Dear reader, she's talking to me, you, can you help us? Please press the down button. And if you were here, I'd have one of you press the down button, but since I'm just by myself, I'll press the one that says down. D-O-W-N. Let's see if anything happens. Oh dear. That didn't work. Ben was starting to feel a little queasy upside down. Do you see he's turning green? Quick, he said. Try the escape button. So let's press that one. Oh, but things became even more muddled. Let's see here. He's got Bella's hat on and she's got his dog dish. And Ben is still very, very green. Dear reader, said the dog, if I may make a suggestion, please press the power button and count down from 10. So I'm gonna press the power button. And then can you help me count down from 10? 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one, let's turn the page. Oh dear, power surge, hold on tight. But suddenly, oh, everything was back under control. Whew. Bella's dog clicked a button. Woof. And when he clicked up, oh, the ladder went up. And then he pressed a different button, squirt. And the water came down. Naughty dog, said Bella. Dear reader, this note says, there's one button that hasn't been pressed yet. Can you find it? I think I know what it was. Did we press escape? Mm -hmm. Did we press squirt? Just did. Spin, mm-hmm. Siren, yep. Voice, indeed. Turn, yep. Up, mm-hmm. Down, repeat. Oh, we didn't press repeat. I think Bella and Ben would love for us to read this story again, but we're not going to, but if you would like to, you can come and borrow it from the library and read it over and over and over. Well, let's see. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, Shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap? Clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, Stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Time for you to stand up. Can you jump, jump, 
jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? <sighs> yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Well, that book really did get out of control, didn't it? And wait till you see what happens in this one. All because somebody was jumping on the bed. We had some monkeys doing that before, didn't we? This is a book by, written and illustrated by Ted Arnold. This is the 25th anniversary of this book. So that, and this, we got this, oh, it's even older than that now. Uh, he did new illustrations for this, but the story is just as fun as when he first wrote it. Well, in his room near the top floor of a tall apartment building, Walter was getting ready for bed. His father said, if I told you once, I told you a million times, no jumping on the bed. Now one day, it's going to crash right through the floor. Now lie down and go to sleep. Have your parents ever said that to you? Well, Walter plopped down on his pillow and he squeezed his eyes closed. Good night, said his father. He turned off the light and pulled the door almost shut. The room was dark and quiet, except for a soft thump, 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 coming from the room up above. That's Delbert upstairs, thought Walter. He switched on his lamp. If Delbert can jump on his bed, so can I. So Walter jumped higher and higher until his hair brushed the ceiling. And when he landed, oh, the mattress creaked, the floor cracked, and his whole bed tipped up sideways and then down through the floor went Walter, bed and all. Now Walter's bedroom was directly above Miss Hattie's dining room and she was quite surprised when Walter landed in her spaghetti and meatballs. I was not expecting company for dinner, she mumbled with a mouthful of meatballs. Mmm, said Walter. Spaghetti is my favorite, but he didn't have a chance to eat. His bed smashed right through the table and kept on crashing down through the floor. Down and down fell Walter and Miss Hattie. The spaghetti, the bed, and all. Now, Mr. Maddie didn't even notice a bed coming through his ceiling until a meatball bounced off his head. Miss Hattie landed in his lap, and Walter splashed into his aquarium. I already had one bath tonight, said Walter. He wanted to watch the monsters on TV, but his bed crunched right through the floor and took the TV with it. Down and down fell Walter, Miss Hattie, Mr. Maddie, the TV, the spaghetti, the bed, and all. Now Walter's Aunt Batty had just moved in and she was still unpacking when Miss Hattie, Mr. Maddie, and a dripping wet Walter tumbled through the ceiling right into a box with her stamp collection. Walter burst through the bottom of the box and down through the floor and Miss Batty soon followed. Down and down fell Walter, Miss Hattie, Mr. Maddie, Aunt Batty, the stamps, the TV, the spaghetti, the bed, and all. Now, Patty and Natty had worked for days building a house of blocks. Afraid that Fatty Cat might knock it over, they shooed her out. And then, oh, 
The upstairs neighbors came right through the ceiling. Excuse us, said Walter. We won't be staying long. And then his bed crashed through the floor. Down and down fell Walter, Miss Hattie, Mr. Maddie, Aunt Batty, Patty, Natty, Fatty, Cat, the blocks, the stamps, the TV, the spaghetti, the bed, and all. Well, the last thing Mr. Hanratty expected to see was a bed coming through his studio ceiling, followed by nearly everyone in the building. Well, if I knew you wanted to see my paintings, he said, I would have tidied up a bit. Then his floor caved in and everyone followed Walter's bed down through the hole. Down and down fell Walter, Miss Hattie, Mr. Maddie, Aunt Batty, Patty, Natty, Fatty Cat, Mr. Hanratty, cans of paint, the blocks, the stamps, the TV, the spaghetti, the bed, and all. That's a lot. Now, Maestro Ferlinghetti and his string quartet were astonished by the colorful crowd that dropped in unannounced. I love an audience, he said. But when paint splattered everywhere, the maestro wished his audience would leave. And they did, taking his string quartet with them. The maestro's floor was also the basement ceiling and it was dark as midnight down there. Walter squeezed his eyes closed and fell through the darkness until he landed on something soft. He opened his eyes. <laughs> Everything was in its place. And outside the door, his mother and father were talking quietly. Whew. No more jumping on the bed for me, said Walter, as he lay back down to sleep. But suddenly, he heard a creak and the ceiling cracked and down came Delbert, bed and all. Down and down fell Delbert. So Walter was dreaming about his bed going through the floor because he jumped on it. But Delbert's, his bed really did go through the floor and I hope it's not going to go through all those floors that would be terrible. That would be out of control. Well, I'm pretty sure it's time for you to stick your hand in your pocket. And if you don't have a pocket, remember, just pretend you do. Stick your hand in and pull out a piece of pretend bubble gum. And take a look at it. If it has a wrapper on it, you certainly don't want to eat that. So unwrap it. Find the nearest trash can. Mine's over there. So I'm going to throw my wrapper in the trash, and then pop the gum in my mouth. I'm gonna chew it up until it's all soft and squishy, and then we're gonna do something disgusting with it. So here we go. Okay, put your hand out. I'm gonna to count to three, and when I do, would you please spit your gum and only your gum into your hand? Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, that's disgusting. And then take your other hand and clap it right on top. So now your hands are stuck together with sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. We don't want to leave it there. So we have to say the word on stick all together. All right, here we go. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Stick it on your chin. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Stick it on your arm. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Stick it on your cheek. On stick. 
Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. Did you do it? Okay, get ready to come back. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. It's time to throw it in the trash. Well, I think it's time for our flannel board story. Now, the other day when it was kind of cool out, well, I felt like baking and I decided to make some gingerbread and not just in a pan. I wanted to make some gingerbread men because they are fun. And so I decided to make one of my very favorite book characters out of gingerbread. So I rolled the dough out flat and cut it very carefully. And then I added some peppermint sticks for eye, for whiskers, excuse me, and some frosting for trim. You recognize who that is, don't you? I bet you do. I made Pete the cat, and I'd like to call him Gingerbread Pete. Now, he needed something else. And I know how much Pete loves buttons. So I gave him buttons made out of something that I love, gumdrops. I gave him a blue one and a red one and a green one and a yellow one. Oh, they looked so good and you know, he loved them and he started singing my buttons my buttons I love my gumdrop buttons my buttons my buttons I love my gumdrop buttons but you know the more I looked at Pete the more I realized that I love gumdrops and I didn't think he'd mind too much so well I ate one. Oh, not a gumdrop button. Oh, yes. <coughs> so now Pete has, well, how many buttons? One, two, three. Hmm. Well, did Ginger Pete cry when I ate one of his buttons? Goodness, no. Gumdrops come and gumdrops go. He still had three, so he kept on singing. My buttons, my buttons, I love my gumdrop buttons. My buttons, my buttons, I love my gumdrop buttons. But you know, I looked at those three gumdrops and I was still kind of hungry. And I knew how delicious gumdrops are. So I decided to eat one more, the green one. Oh, it was delicious. So, well, now Pete has two gumdrop buttons. Did Ginger Pete cry? Goodness, no. Gumdrop buttons come and gumdrop buttons go. He just kept on singing. My buttons, my buttons, I love my gumdrop buttons. My buttons, my buttons, I love my gumdrop buttons. But you know, I was still kind of hungry and those buttons looked so tasty. So I decided to eat, oh, just one more. And I did. Also now Pete has, how many? He has 
one gumdrop button. Did Ginger Pete cry? Goodness, no. The gumdrop buttons come and gumdrop buttons go. He just kept on singing. My button, my button, I love my gumdrop button. My button, my button, I love my gumdrop button. Well, you won't believe it. But I was still hungry. And, well, blue is my favorite color. And there was one gumdrop button left. And you have to admit, Pete looks kind of silly with just one button. So do you know what I did? I ate it. It was delicious. And then Pete cried, my buttons, my buttons, you ate all my gumdrop buttons. Poor Ginger Pete was really sad. And you know, I did feel a little bad about, well, eating all his yummy gumdrop buttons. So I figured I needed to do something about it. And I found some new buttons for Ginger Pete. Let's see if I can get them up there. Here it comes. One. Two. Three. Four. And you know, those new buttons made Pete so happy. He sang a new song. My buttons, my buttons, you can't eat my plastic buttons. My buttons, my buttons, you can't eat my plastic buttons. And that just goes to show that it's all good. Right, Pete? I'm glad he forgave me. Well, let's finish up with our one of our Sandra Boynton books, and this time we're going to use our Jungle Night one. This is her new one that she did with Yo-Yo Ma. I always suggest check it out on, uh, I think it's on YouTube, that you can hear them singing and playing together. Well, it is nighttime in the jungle. The moon will surely rise. All the animals are sleeping with whisperings and sighs. Listen to the tiger, see, zoo, ha. And listen to the cheetah, chee, chee, ta. Can you hear the crocodile? Snorkel, ooh, snorkel, ooh. And all the little monkeys, chatter, choo, chatter, choo. We grunt, we grunt, go the Red River hogs. Rop, rop it, rop, rop it, go the green jungle frogs. The dazzling bird makes a long, quiet coo. And the great big gorilla goes hee, hoo, hoo, hoo. But sometime after midnight, the elephant goes snort. And whoever had been sleeping isn't sleeping anymore. Well, I hope you have a good night's sleep and I hope you'll join us again next week when it'll be time for some bedtime stories with Mrs. Ferris. And Bernard, thanks for joining us.